Doctor, doctor, give me the news. All right. Many of you in the crowd may recognize this as the CR-10. I've gotten this from a friend of mine at work um, who says it is broken. Let's uh, fire it up and see how to break it for the, I mean fix it. Of course we're going to fix it. All right, it looks like we got a healthy case of no boot itis. So this is just not a camera artifact. There is nothing going on in the screen here. Nothing. I can't get anything out of it. We're going to have to take a peek see on what's going on, on the inside here um, to make sure that uh, everything is good to go. Uh, he said he flashed some firmware on here and then he tried flashing it back to the old firmware and then to some known good firmware and basically none of the firmware is actually firmware correctly. So we'll probably have to take it apart see if the board's running but um, at this time I, uh, I don't even know where to begin. Let's find out. Out of place. So the the few times that he's taken it apart, it doesn't look like you know any damage has been caused there. All of the leads look fine. Um, the uh, MOSFETs in place, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna have to um, dig a little deeper in here. Uh, to see what All right, there we have it. We have the guts. It's just a really super tiny board, honestly. And one of the re main reasons they're able to get away with such a small board is actually because they move uh, all of the bed switching over to this giant MOSFET over here, um, which handles the high amounts of current that go to the bed. So if I remember correctly, these are supposed to be 24 volt, but they are 12. Um, so what, you know, that the, the important part about that is um, with double the voltage, um, you will get four times the power out of the same resistor. So uh, now that we have this here and the power supply looking perilously, um, we need to take a, a deeper dive into the workings of the uh, of the board here. So what we can see are the driver heat sinks here, um, as well as their trim pots. These little things that have screws. Um, so screw heads on them uh, that controls the current um, as well as taking a look at what is hooked up for end stops and thermistors as well as the ribbon cable so one of the things that we have is that the um, LCD lights up but doesn't power on that might be firmware or that might be um, simply something isn't plugged in correctly so let's uh, let's take a look at how that works too let's just uh, do the classic IT trick and literally unplug and plug it back in. Um, at this time, I do not see any um, anything on the board that would really cause me to, to worry um, very much at all. We're going to plug in with the flowing in place. Hopefully don't get shocked. Ah! No, it's fine. And it looks like the LCD is still not making any um, making any progress, but we do have a blue status light here on the board. It's not a flashing red one, which I found is always a good sign. And as always, the stupid fan is loud as hell. I had one two years ago, and they're still just loud and annoying. But we'll uh, we'll keep looking into what would cause it not to boot um, and not to display anything. All right, let's uh, let's plug it into the computer and, and see what the head has to say. All right, so it looks like this is a problem, child. It uh, doesn't really want to uh, work at all. Um, we're getting a lot of not in sync, and it won't respond to programming or connections. So it is time for more Google Foo. Um, we are going to try a couple things. We're going to try resetting it while it's uploading or trying to upload, anyways. Uh, we're going to try um, finding a reset. Uh, jump around here, maybe there's something like that, or the third option is to reflash the bootloader. So let's uh, let's see what works. Well, um, I'm trying to connect to it right now, and it doesn't look like any lights are flashing. So that typically means that it just doesn't want to. It just don't want to talk. None of that kind of stuff. So 
Um, we're going to try reflashing it with a uh, Arduino and just to make sure that this is good to go. So that'll be done tomorrow. 24 hours later. So flashing means we have to trick this thing into being a programmer, um, which will then trick that thing into doing what we want. So let's uh, um, got to load up a sketch on here and then hook up these pins on here, the ISP programmer pins here to the ISP programming pins on there and then teach it how to think for itself. And then from there that allow that thing to talk to my computer and uh, actually learn Marlin again. So I uh, followed the instructions on the link below. Um, I used this simple Arduino Uno um, to flash a bootloader uh, using that guide. And then I uh, flashed Marlin to the board and it appears to be working. There's a thing. So I'm going to flip it around. Ho, ho, ho. It works. It works. We got um working well it's using my uh, custom moniker that I use for my old CR 10 <laughs> gotta make sure I'll leave that on there for him so when he reflashes it he's at least reminded and it still has the same awful whir that the old one did beforehand that just requires a little bit of percussive maintenance but there you go if you ever have a CR 10 that has a blank screen and doesn't what the heck over Oh, loose power cable. So if you ever have a CR10 that uh, um, has a blank screen after flashing with some new firmware, uh, the reason he did it was because he has an E3D hot end on this side and, and uh, mesh leveling. Just uh, reflash it with the bootloader. It might have lost it. It might have, might have forgot what the hell it was doing in the first place. And uh, you should be go. So if you like this short video, hit like, get subscribed, feel free to ask questions. Um, I don't own one of these now, but I did own one and I upgraded it to high heavens and back at an E3D hot end. Um, I actually made the first E3D V6 adapter, I think, for the CR10, um, it's on Thingiverse. Uh, in addition, I have my uh, new shooter, which I'll probably be using, my, me fixing this as a favor to make a video on how to uh, get flexible filaments extruded on there. Uh, I'm pretty pretty proud of this uh, this little block here uh, for extruding flexible filaments with Bowden so I'll be happy to share that and uh, remember to subscribe if you want more cool content like this if you I mean if you think it's cool I think it's cool so you know what it's worth it thanks for watching hasta la bye bye